The gates are closed and the signs are clear, warning people to stay away as there are dangerous animals inside. But there may be other reasons that visitors are not welcome here. This is just one of several controversial farms across China that has a permit to breed rhinos ostensibly for research purposes. These are live rhinos that are coming from South Africa and they're coming into China to be bred in captivity so that the horn can be shaved from them and potentially in the future put into commercial trade here in China. A trade that is illegal. China is one of the signatories to an international treaty drawn up in 1973 to protect wildlife against exploitation that could threaten their survival. The traditional Chinese medicine believes rhino horns are a cure-all for everything from headaches to cancer. And despite the ban, this hidden camera video taken by conservationists shows that rhino horns are still available on the back shelves of traditional pharmacies. The Chinese government did take some very important steps by banning the domestic trade in rhino horns, so they need to be commended for that. Uh, but the problem is that another branch of the government is at the same time giving out permits to import rhinos to do this sort of pharmaceutical research. So it sends a, a mixed message, really, and that's something that we'd like to see stop. Live rhinos are still being imported into China, and breeders maintain that their interests lie in protecting them. They say they have already found a way to cut off the animal's horns without costing them their life. But they have yet to prove that claim. In 2011, Hong Kong Customs seized $2 million worth of rhino horn and ivory, the largest ever such seizure. But there were no immediate arrests. For its part, the mainland government hasn't been seen to be serious about cracking down on illegal traders. And as demand remains high, there is little discouraging breeders from making rhino horns available on the black market. Conservationists say the current system exploits loopholes in the international treaty and circumvents the ban. A white rhinoceros lies dead in the Kruger National Park, South Africa. Her leg and back are sliced open. Her eyes gouged out. Her horns have been sawn off at the stump. If they're lucky, they kill it with one shot. The crime squad works quickly. It's not just because of the stench of the corpse and the flies. The team is under the constant threat of attack by wild animals. So it's a very gory, bloody situation, crime scene that we end up dealing with. Using butcher's knives, the team cuts into the animal's flesh, looking for a dart or bullet. Investigators with metal detectors comb the scene for spent cartridges and other evidence. We just find it very difficult to accept that we have to lose rhinos as we do at the rate we're doing in order to satisfy those particular needs in a far distant country. After just a few minutes' work, the metal detector rings out. It's found the bullet. Rhinos across the world are facing their worst crisis in decades. The number of rhinos killed has soared in recent years. There's a huge demand all sorts of criminals who would be in other forms of criminality. They've seen the opportunity and they're climbing in hard and fast. Poaching gangs have become increasingly sophisticated, using helicopters, night vision equipment and mercenaries experienced in rhino tracking. We are seeing individuals that are coming into the parks with silenced weapons, crossbows, expensive crossbows, heavy caliber weapons that have been silenced, Rhinos are being killed at an average of more than one a day to supply an exploding demand for rhino horn in Asia. Certain people attribute medicinal properties to rhino horn, and this has led to an epidemic of poaching in Africa and soaring black market prices in consuming countries. But this is not about questioning people's beliefs or lifestyles. It's about the survival of keystone species. 
If the current trend in poaching of rhino continues the way it has, the worst case scenario is that the rhino, this iconic species, will be driven to extinction in the wild. 40 years ago, white rhinos were on the brink of extinction. Years of conservation efforts and a ban on the trade in rhino horn have seen the population rise to more than 20,000. But the future of the species hangs in the balance. For us to lose those animals now, I believe would be a global catastrophe. This is the story of an animal under threat. Hilani Royal Park, Swaziland. The country has been hit hard by poaching over the years. By the 1960s, nearly all of the native big game had been wiped out from poaching, overhunting and habitat loss. The rhino wars of the 1970s and 80s devastated what was left of the species. For more than 50 years, the Riley family has worked hard to protect rhinos helping the country flourish as a destination for ecotourism, creating the country's first national parks and nature reserves. All signs seem to point to better days. But in the last few years, the rhino wars have been brought back to Africa, and Swaziland's rhino population faces an uncertain future. At dusk, just before it got dark on the 3rd of June, um, they located a rhino cow and calf and uh, they shot the rhino mother. Well practiced, very good shot. The animal went 10 meters before uh, she collapsed and they removed the horns and the guys made off, made off with the horns and were back in South Africa with the horns the next day. In June 2011, Swaziland lost its first rhino to poachers in 20 years. Heartrending. Um, you'll find a, a rhino cow with a baby calf without a horn, just a pimple on its nose. And the mother goes down, and that calf usually will defend the mother, won't allow the poachers to get anywhere near it. Mm. And they end up having to shoot it too. And then they chop off the, the horn with, with, a, with a chainsaw and half the face with it and just leave the rhino there. And we've had several instances where the rhino has slipped off the drugs and staggered to its feet without a face uh, with, with bits of meat just hanging from its nose. How, how do you deal with people like that? But Swaziland's poaching problem is not as serious as that of its neighbor, South Africa, where nearly 90% of all rhinos live. Home to about 20,000 animals, it's become the main target of rhino poachers. For 15 years from the early 1990s, poaching figures rarely made it into double figures. But in the last few years, poaching has exploded. In 2011, rhino deaths in South Africa set a new record, with 448 being killed. Kruger National Park has paid a heavy price for having the largest rhino population in the world. More than half of South Africa's rhino killings, 252, took place here in 2011. Well, I believe it's, it's a big threat, a huge problem for us at the moment. Well, the worst case scenario is that we lose every single rhino on the African continent. Ken Maggs is head of the Environmental Crime Investigation and Air Services and is a senior member of the Wildlife Crime Reaction Unit. Set up in 2010, it's an umbrella body to coordinate efforts between South Africa's park authorities, the police, the military, and the prosecuting authorities in the fight against the rhino killings. We focus 
largely on the organized crime aspect of, of the environmental crime impacting sand parks. We're very, very fortunate. You know, we, we really have a, a dedicated team, committed. There's nothing better than a highly trained, well-motivated field ranger that stands between the rhino and, of course, the poacher. What we're doing this morning is we got um, an informant, a confidential informant of ours, contacted us saying that he had information of a group of poachers coming in. He couldn't give us the number, um, but they are armed, they are coming after rhino. Bruce is one of only 17 staff who make up the Rhino Protection Unit, covering a park the size of the Netherlands. Poaching crews often use trackers to find the rhinos and then radio their position to a shooter. The horns can be hacked off and out of the park within minutes. In certain areas, we have as many as three to four groups hunting at once that have infiltrated into the parks. In the first three months of 2011, 89 suspects were arrested for poaching in the park. But for every poacher caught, many more escape. Today's search proves fruitless. Every time we go out, we're learning. We're giving the dog more experience and training. The people operating against the poachers are getting experience, we go back to the office, debrief, decide what mistakes we made, discuss them, and try and rectify those mistakes. Rhinos had been near extinction before commercial trade in rhino horn was banned by CITES, the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora, in 1977. The black rhino was the most numerous of the world's rhino species. There were 100,000 in the 60s, but they were hunted and poached until just 2,400 remained. If not for CITES, the rhino would be extinct in the wild today. It is because of CITES that the species has recovered to the point where we now have in the order of 25,000 rhino on the planet. CITES is critical to the survival of the rhino in the wild. It provides the regulatory framework which sets the rules of the game. But over the last few years, poaching has skyrocketed. Poaching levels are unsustainable. This species will be driven to extinction in the wild if these trends continue. Rhinos are one of the big five. They bring in millions of dollars worth of tourism to South Africa. Throughout the country, community-led initiatives linking employment, infrastructure, education and healthcare with conservation and species protection are being promoted. One such program is this thatching cooperative, providing jobs for local women living in and near Kruger. The park is very important to our community because it creates jobs for us. We, the people, and the tourists are coming from far away to here and they leave money here, so the park creates the jobs for us. This is the only employment these people have. They rely on that employment to support their families. Um, if they were to lose that, it means that an entire family could go hungry and without food. Ben Jans van Rensburg is head of enforcement at CITES. CITES' approach to conservation recognises that the long-term future for wildlife is dependent on sustainable rural development and that local people need to be partners in enforcement. A lot of the poaching that's going on at the moment, to my opinion, is, is crimes of greed. That is money, people chasing money. People involved in poaching are actually playing with other people's lives. 
if they will continue killing the rhinos, it means that we will not even find this job that we have now. So without rhinos, there will be no jobs. Wildlife crime is estimated by the Center for International Policy to be worth between eight and $10 billion a year. Attracted by spiraling profits, CITES believes organized crime syndicates are moving in. And the threat goes well beyond the rhino range states in Africa. Museums are under attack across the world. Officials at Europol, the European Union's criminal intelligence agency, claim the number of thefts of rhino horns has increased sharply. In 2011, criminals stole rhino horn from museums and private collections in more than 15 countries. Both Interpol and the United Nations Office of Drugs and Crime have made it very clear that this crime involves organised crime. We have the poaching groups numbering up to five, six individuals well-armed, from pistols to, to sophisticated military weapons, AK-47s, uh, adequate ammunition. We've had poachers armed with hand grenades. It's a massive threat. Uh, it involves highly organised criminal gangs armed with automatic weapons and, and very willing to shoot their way out of any kind of resistance they're going to meet. It's not only the rhino losses that we worry about, they're our own people and, and we have buried our own dead. It's a dangerous business. Heavily armed rangers and poachers play a deadly game of cat and mouse. Enforcement authorities risk their lives on a daily basis to protect rhino populations. There are dedicated individuals that are prepared to go out there night and day up against well-trained, well-motivated, ruthless poaching groups in order to safeguard rhino, knowing that at any time they can be killed. So the dedication and commitment is, is of the highest caliber. Unfortunately, people will die because of the nature of war. It escalates as we adapt to against their tactics, they adapt against ours. I suppose the brutality of it actually is being lost on me at the moment. I think to survive the emotional side of things, one gets hardened. It's like seeing dead poachers now. I've seen enough this year not to worry about them anymore. Rhino horn has been used in traditional medicine in China and Vietnam for centuries. But in the new global economy, where products can be bought at the click of a mouse, the demand for rhino horn is exploding in emerging economies in Asia. Sections of a new Asian elite are willing to pay whatever it takes, and a new international smuggling mafia is invading Africa to satisfy that demand. We know that they're, they're highly organized, it's syndicated, those horns could, could quite conceivably be taken off a rhino today in, in, in Swaziland, and by next week they're already in Asia. And because individual horns are compact, they can be transported easily. We're picking up uh, the, the horns uh, by means of scanners at the airport. Every bag must be scanned. Marilee van Heerden is a senior prosecutor at the National Prosecuting Authority of South Africa. Some of the horns that we detected on the, on, in the suitcases were still full of blood. Um, it smelled a lot. Some of them were freshly cut. Authorities in South Africa saw patterns emerging in the smuggling routes of rhino horn leaving the country. I work in the Johannesburg area of jurisdiction. We have the Awatamba International Airport, that is the main airport. Uh, it's a gateway to the rest of the world. And we have, in our cases in court, realised that most of our accused are people from Vietnam. Uh, with exception of, I think, one or two other people, it was all Vietnamese citizens that were prosecuted and convicted in our area. Vietnam, once home to thousands of Javan rhinos. In 2011, poachers killed the nation's last animal living in the wild. Yet the country has no shortage of rhino horn. Vietnam has become a key destination, targeted by traffickers in the illegal trade. Về cái sừng sừng tê thì từ lâu đời của Việt Nam ấy thì là các cụ nhà mình 
tức là hàng trăm năm trước đã dùng rồi bởi vì là những cái hiện tượng như là sốt cao sốt quá cao rồi sinh co giật rồi sốt cao sinh điên cuồng thì ngày xưa thì không có những vị nào bằng nó cả nếu mà bị ngay và uống ngay thì nó sẽ cứu cái người bệnh đến 70 phần trăm Stopping the use of rhino horn is not about questioning tradition. It's about the conservation of a species. The illegal rhino market went quiet in the 90s as domestic trade was banned in major consuming countries. In 1993, China banned the use of rhino horn and removed it from use in traditional medicine in the interests of conservation. But over the last few years, demand has soared there are many theories for the sudden surge. One cause appears to be a rumor started in Vietnam five or six years ago that rhino horn had cured cancer in a high-ranking official. The official was not named, nor were any details of his cancer released. But that didn't stop the rumor from spreading rapidly. <coughs> Hanoi resident Mr. Sun, not his real name, paid $2,000 for his piece of horn. After 20 minutes of rubbing the horn against a specifically designed bowl with the drawing of a rhino on the side, Mr. Sun poured the mixture into a glass and drank the milky liquid. Thực ra thì bác hôm nay với mai lần thứ hai bác thì chỉ mới là uống để mà bừa một dung bừa để uống với để thấy uống được rượu không nhiều hơn mà không bị say thôi. In the markets of Hanoi, it doesn't take long to find rhino horn for sale, but its authenticity is questionable. The CITES Management Authority in Vietnam believes a significant percentage of rhino horn for sale in the markets is fake. Though black market prices vary widely, dealers in Vietnam quoted prices ranging from $40 to $140 a gram which at the top end is double the price of gold and can exceed the price of cocaine. The Vietnamese government and enforcement authorities believe that Vietnam is only a transit country for rhino horn before it reaches its final destination. Các cơ khẩu tại Việt Nam thì có các cơ khẩu sân bay quốc tế như sân bay nội bài <cười> Hà Nội, sân bay tân sân nhất ở thành phố Hồ Chí Minh và cái tuyến hàng tuyến đường biển từ Hải Phòng đi Móng Cái là những cái tuyến mà trong điểm để các cái đối tượng buôn lậu. Chúng tôi thì thừa nhận rằng Việt Nam thì vẫn có cái tình trạng sử dụng trái phép sừng tê giác tuy nhiên hầu hết các cái sừng tê giác chúng tôi được biết qua các cái thông tin tình báo thì được chuyển sang nước thứ ba chứ ít không phải là sử dụng tại Việt Nam bởi vì là In a factory showroom 40 miles from Hanoi, the then duck company makes and sells plates designed to grind rhino horn. In the showroom, amongst the rhino artifacts, the grinding plates are one of the best sellers. The design on the outside doesn't leave much to the imagination. Ở đây nữa, tức là 2008 giờ chúng tôi không phát hiện được vụ nào. 
thì trong 2007, 2008 thì lực lượng cảnh sát môi trường có phát hiện được hai vụ, hai sừng tê giác. A source country can't deal with threat like this on its own. It needs the support of transit and destination countries where where these products will end up. We're all in this together. The only way we're going to tackle this problem is by stopping the poaching, stopping the smuggling and stopping the consuming. Encouragingly, at the end of 2011, Vietnam sent a delegation to the Kruger National Park to see at first hand the devastation caused by poaching. True breakthroughs in the fight against rhino horn smuggling can only happen when authorities in consumer and transit countries cooperate fully by following the illegal trail of criminality to the very top. It's not just in the back street markets that horn is for sale. At Hanoi's biggest hospital, this doctor also boasted about the benefits of using rhino horn. <laughs> Two white rhino run from the helicopter as it swoops down. The shot takes one out. Within seconds, the tranquilizer kicks in and the three-ton animal falls to the ground, stunned. The team rushes in and gets to work quickly before the drugs wear off. We don't have any other choice but to save the rhino for our future generations. Um, I don't believe the world can afford to lose a species like that. Dr. Cindy Harper is the director of the veterinary genetics lab at the University of Pretoria and the creator of a new rhino DNA database. She's training rangers, veterinary workers and members of anti-poaching units in parks around the country. Because for catching poachers, DNA is as good as it gets. The DNA database is a collection of DNA profiles of all the rhinos in Africa. That's what we're aiming for. The most important function is to assist with the investigation of rhino poaching cases. Blood is taken, identifying markers are cut into the rhino's ears, and microchips are inserted to track the horn. And then we start with the horns. The new technique allows any rhino horn seized by police at border crossings to be identified, linking all perpetrators along the crime chain and helping bring about a prosecution. Investigators provide us with samples from all the rhino poaching cases. We could also look at the DNA from equipment that they've used, so knives and axes, and then also for recovered horns. We can do the DNA profiling on the recovered horn and link that back through DNA to the actual poaching case. The DNA database is invaluable in our prosecutions because DNA will be able to link the rhino horn that we found at the airport, for example, back to a poaching incident somewhere in the country. When there is a successful prosecution, it means what we're doing is worthwhile. The team will take the DNA from three more rhino that day. The Northern Cape lost its first rhino this year. If, if we as conservationists and if we as, uh, as humans cannot turn this thing around, all the other species that share this planet with us would or certainly will be in, in huge danger. The government of South Africa is fighting back. Soldiers from the South Africa National Defence Force have deployed in the Kruger. I would say stay away, don't come here. Don't go anywhere else, change jobs because we're going to find you. In 2012, three rhino poachers were sentenced to 25 years imprisonment, the toughest sentences ever handed down for rhino poaching in South Africa. As a prosecutor, you must understand if you want to come to our country and poach our national heritage, you will meet the full might of the law. But the slaughter hasn't stopped. This is going to be a tough, long fight. 
But if we all work together, range states, consumer states, at national level and international level, we will win this fight. They must just stop killing the rhinos because it, it is like they are killing us. Kenya, in Africa. The last two northern white rhinos, poised on the brink of extinction. But can science save them? For the making of his BBC Seven Worlds One Planet series, naturalist David Attenborough traveled to the Old Pajeta Conservancy to film with the last two northern white rhinos. Once widespread, Najin and Fatu are now all that is left of this subspecies, which has been brutally hunted by poachers for many decades. Nearby is a memorial. Here, gravestones mark the deaths of some of the many rhinos killed by poachers since 2004. That's particularly a sad one. Max. I think I may have met him. When David made his first wildlife documentary in the 1950s, there were over 2,000 northern white rhinos in Africa. Sudan. The last male northern white rhino. Now, only Najin and Fatu survive, and to keep them safe from poachers, they must live out their days under constant armed guard. Unfortunately, uh, these rhinos are under the threat of being poached for their horns, which has a, um, a market in, in the Middle East. A kilo can go with uh, around 6,500 US dollars. With no male survivors and both females unable to carry a pregnancy, Many people consider the northern white rhino to already be extinct. You watch them every day looking at extinction with just, you know, um, nothing much they can do than just accept the fate that you've allowed them to be in. But a group of scientists believe this need not be the final chapter in the northern white rhino's story. Right now we are here at Olpechita Conservancy. Tomorrow is a, one of a very important phase of a project which is going on for more than five years. Using in vitro fertilization techniques, the scientists will take eggs from the last two females and attempt to fertilize them with frozen sperm, collected from two northern white rhino males before their deaths. If embryos are successfully created, they could be transferred to a surrogate mother of a different subspecies, allowing a population of northern white rhinos to be created, even if the last two females were no longer alive. The power of IVF is the multiplication factor. If we have embryos, we can multiply. We can have 10, 20, maybe 30 embryos a year and then place them in southern white rhinos and then uh, create a new northern white rhino population in a very, very short time. After years of planning, the procedure tomorrow will determine the future of this subspecies. We are confident that, that we will change the world tomorrow. It's the day of the procedure. First, the females are separated. 
The rhinos are then tranquilized. This is very good. In one, 100 milligrams. The team will have to work fast before the anesthetic wears off. This procedure has never been done before. New technology and ultrasound must be used to locate the ovaries. After four long years of preparation, the eggs have finally been collected. But this is just the beginning. They must airlift them from Kenya to the laboratory in Italy, where they will be fertilized with the frozen sperm. This procedure must happen within hours, so the journey across continents needs to go without errors. One month later, there is good news. The team was able to harvest 10 eggs, leading to the development of two northern white rhino embryos. Preparations for the right surrogate mothers to carry these embryos are now underway. Only time will tell, but there may yet be a future for the northern white rhino. I think the young generation is much more aware of what biodiversity actually means. We as scientists think we, we can help to rewind some of these mistakes and give the responsibility to the young generation.